Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Episode 4. Wow, we are blitzing through this. Right, so last episode we sent someone to the moon, not actually to land on the moon, but through the sphere of influence. We got, oh, I don't know, 100, 100 of science or something. So we bought a uh, probe body so that we can come in here and build a rocket, well, build a satellite to go to Minmus and um, to take a load of ketane samples and stuff. Uh, for some reason I decided to completely cut out the uh, the building that I was doing here. I didn't even record it for some reason. I, I don't know why. But there we go. There is my vessel. Um, oh, what, what was it? I said it looks clear is the vessel name. Uh, obviously a pitch black reference there. I think that's quite good. And if you don't like it, you can go die in a small hole somewhere. But yeah, anyway, you'll notice that I've used the same lifter technology as last time. And it's so good, in fact, we're going to put this in as a sub-assembly. Because I can see me using it uh, at least for low orbital stuff for a little while yet to come. Um, so there we go. That's all that done. But not really, because uh, we're going to Minmus with this. And this only really got up into to curb in orbit last time. Uh, like convincingly up into orbit but you know it could do with some more uh, more boosters um, which I should hopefully get to in a second for some reason my mouse has gone off screen and I'm not doing it there we go we're back hey so on the uh, ship up the top there what we've got is actually the um, the ketane scanner obviously and the radar scanner from um, ScanSat uh, so that we can get up there, we can take ketane readings, because, you know, uh, and we can take uh, altimeter meetings, so that we can pick ourselves somewhere nice to land and start our first off-planet base, uh, which is going to be on Mimus, because that's easy to get to. Not just easy to get to, but also easy to take off from as well. But here we go, we're, we're taking off, we are away. Uh, you'll notice the, uh, the, the double sets of uh, solid boosters there. They, they, they should hopefully kick me up far enough. Um, th this is just a satellite. It is, I, I don't know how much it weighs, but it doesn't weigh anywhere near as much as, say, uh, a Kerbal and, like, all his stuff that is needed to keep him safe. So stage one and two happened without any hitches. I, I, I kind of want to call them stage one because they're just solid fuel boosters released at different times but I suppose technically it is stage one and two. And we pull ourselves over for a gravity turn, um, trying to keep basically equatorial because I don't know where Mimus is in its orbit right now and that's kind of needed. But it's no matter for now, we'll get up into orbit, uh, you know, a standard 100 kilometer orbit. I, it's where I like to be, I don't know why, I just, I feel safe at 100 kilometers. But anyway, we'll find out where Mimus in is, is in its orbit just by setting the, uh, the, the target to there. And we're just going to, as I say, coast our way up to Apple Apps, um, circularize the orbit, and then start figuring out how we're going to meet up with that pesky pesky little bit of rock called Mimus. Now, I'm already bored of watching this thing just kind of drift up, so we're going to let it uh, cut up to the uh, Apple apps. Uh, you can tell I am because I started going up and now I'm going back down again, which means that I must have uh, hit the top of the curve. Uh, we do a, a little bit of staging here and we just watch the numbers up on my top left of my screen there to see when my Perry apps and my Apple apps are anywhere near close to each other. Uh, I also notice that I am incredibly close to my, um, oh, what are they called? They're not maneuver nodes. Descending node, of course, yes, the inclination bit. Um, so that means I've got to very quickly slam down a, uh, a an, an maneuver node, a maneuver node, a maneuver node, um, and hope that I can get the, the these two lined up beautifully uh, which if I change my, my my field of angle there we go I should be able to see a little bit better and for some reason it's it's already completely off so we're gonna spend some time messing around with the maneuver nodes until I end up with this sort of close thing I'm a little bit worried about a moon encounter but that was close enough to mean that I am actually going to intercept Min intersect Minmus here which is indeed what this mission is all about so swinging the front of my craft round to point at my maneuver nerd. We're going to call up resources to make sure that I'm not like completely running out of fuel though. I am at sort of low fuel status, but that's all right. We're in space. The hard bit has been achieved. Uh, we're going to time warp round and like so the moon's there when I'm when I'm thrusting. So somewhere should actually be Minmus in the background. 
I can't see it. I can only presume that it is directly behind the moon. Um, but there we go. Flying on instruments. Uh, we're going to take that as the perfect orbit that I'd already set up. And hopefully we'll go check this out. Uh, it's close. It is very close. But what we're going to do is set a new maneuver node. Because obviously if you don't get that first one exactly perfect, this second one isn't going to do much better either. Uh, indeed, I find myself being a little bit short. So I need to boost up right here so that it spends more time getting there and then I can yeah just like that um, slowly slowly as, as I play this game I'm getting more and more used to how orbital dynamics work where to cause more time to happen where where you can get greater hang time if you will so you can either catch up or slow or well catch up or take longer to get to your particular piece of destination um, it just takes practice guys basically if you need to spend more time boost a little bit at the furthest point away from your orbit so you can just drift round in a nice lazy arc which is at the end of the day what orbital dynamics is all about great big fat lazy arcs uh, so there we go uh, we, we have our initial maneuver set up well our secondary maneuver set up uh, we're going to pass through the shadow of Kerbin and head towards the moon because around about the moon's um, uh, elevation I suppose uh, we, we need to start uh, doing this and there we go I just I just gave it a little tweak and there we go five days time we're going to uh, to Minmus well five days time we're going to intersect Minmus now in these five days I could go off I could do many things I have the alarm clock but that's not what we're going to use the alarm clock for we're just going to use the alarm clock to pull us out of this um this horrendous time warp that I'm doing because, hey, we don't want to warp straight past Minmus. Though, on more than one occasion now, this has not helped me out. Um, this isn't one of them. It's, it's generally on my sandbox games where it's just like, yeah, you were going too fast. But anyway, we'll, we'll trust it for now. Uh, we're we're going to watch the biomes that come past and try and spot Minmus. But I can tell you now, I will not spot Minmus. Uh, I have only once in my entire Kerbal career been able to spot Minmus before I'm completely see that it just came out of nowhere I didn't see it I was looking around for it I had no idea but anyway we are very close to being within the sphere of influence at the moment my biome readout still says that we are in Kerbal Kerb in space uh, but that's all right we're gonna start arranging ourselves um, for a slowdown burn uh, though this may not be in the right direction because the alarm clock went off I was like oh this must be like uh, the, the, the this must be set to Minmus but it, it's not I've still got a minute of drifting through space before we get into Minmus's sphere of influence and if I was on the ball I would have remembered that but of course we all know that I'm really really never on the ball so we're going to have a look around see what's going on I'm going to start up this uh, this scanning system but it does appear that I'm far too far away because of course we're still in Kerbin sphere of influence um, and there we go I, I do believe it is just clicked over or is just about to click over uh, we'll, we'll watch my nav ball and see if it changes at uh, any point in the very near future. Uh, I was kind of hoping that I'd done a little bit more time warping in this. There we go. That, that, that's the bit I was looking for. Because we are going to come down towards Minmus Periaps uh, before we can uh, circularize our burn. Because wherever... Well, I say circularize. Before we uh, decelerate our, uh, our orbit. Because wherever you take that decelerating burn from is indeed where the um, Apple Apps of your of your flight will be and we want it to be as low down as possible which obviously is periaps does mean a little bit more fuel to get us round into that circular orbit but it's all right we brought plenty of oh no i've run out oh dear <laughs> uh, i seem to be on some sort of collision with um with minmus which actually works out quite well uh, it was an accident at the time but it does mean i get to jettison that stage and i'm not leaving stuff in orbit which is kind of important uh, so we'll go back to the uh, orbital view and we'll try and pull that out of um, out of the Minmus surface hopefully uh, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not completely incompetent when it comes to this so there we go that said if you've watched any of my previous series on Kerbal Space Program you'll know that I am not a genius at this either though I do quite enjoy orbital mechanics it makes me happy I, I get smiles when I do this. So we're going to come down and try and find out what, what the height of this is. And judge uh, when I say this, I obviously mean what height the, uh, the, the, the 
scan sat starts working and judging at my altitude at the time it's about 450 meters uh, 450 kilometers wow i cannot speak now um which we will endeavor to make as a nice and circular orbit as possible yeah honestly for 400 300 that's 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 nearly circular right it's only 100 kilometers <laughs> Um, and yeah, we'll just cruise round for a little bit, gathering data. Um, hopefully we're down low enough so the key thing detector can work. But first I'm just going to look through all these different map views. Unfortunately, um, with Scanset being, uh, I don't know if it's beta or alpha, but not being fully finished, uh, a lot of the Minma stuff isn't quite, isn't quite finished obviously. But that's alright, we've got, we've got alt altimeter data, which is really good that, that that's what we want we want to know where where the, the the deep troughs are and the high peaks are so that we can get down and not waste too much fuel getting too low down onto minmus's surface it's not really the most important thing in the world as minmus is as i say really really easy to land on and take off from but yeah talking of the rock there it is Woo. Which only really leaves me with one more thing to do for this particular mission, and that is, of course, get down low enough so we can start doing some key thing scanning. Um, if we're going to have a re refuel station out on uh, Minmus, we, we really need to have um, a base. Well, not a base, uh, somewhere to put the base, sorry. Uh, which means scanning for key thing, which means getting down below, what is it, two, 250 kilometers, uh, which I think I have managed to do quite well. Indeed, um, well, we've not crashed it. We, we've actually gone up and started getting data, and we're putting ourselves in the final orbit, as I say, to get the keythane equipment. Uh, whilst we're doing this, uh, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. I know there's not many out of, many of you out there watching this, and I really do appreciate when you do take the time to watch this. So, uh, thanks, guys. There's our last objective coming in on this particular mission, and that's all from me. Bye!